Hello everyone, I'm going to present a paper named Neural Reflectance Fields for Appearance Acquisition. This is a follow-up paper of NERF that also handles material properties of the object. So as we already know that NERF is getting impressive results on capturing appearance and the bottom right is showing a result of capturing a real-world car. It's getting pretty nice looking results. And we want to ask if that's all we need. Actually, NERF, as the name suggests, neural radiance field, it is capturing radiance, but not material properties of this object. So we can do view synthesis, but still cannot do relighting. And actually, this is pretty important for real-world applications, such as game industry, VR, and AR. For example, for game contents, they are mainly created by artists manually, so if we can have some ways to automatically capture material, then it will just reduce the pain. And also, for VR AR applications, we want to do realistic object insertion, and here we also need material. <clears throat> and here are some priors on material capturing. Classic works usually use light stage settings, uh, basically sampling different camera viewpoints and different lighting conditions. And they are more precise, but also pretty bulky. Recently, people are uh, preferring to have more portable capturing. Maybe we can just use cell phone camera and flashlight. Uh, but uh, prior, works usually are prior works are usually using much and voxel-based representation, and these representations cannot ca capture fine details. And we already know that NERV is getting impressive results and can capture fine details, but still cannot handle material properties. So one natural thing is to consider whether we can try to extend NERV to also capture materials. So here comes the task definition. So we want to go one step further than NERV. We want to jointly capture geometry and material. So here the input is a multi-view images captured with some constrained lighting conditions. And the output is a 3D representation named near reflectance view. So let's start with the capture condition. So it is a co-located camera light setup. It basically means that, for example, here, if I want to capture an object on the desk, I place a camera here. The, the assumption for lighting is the only light source that lights this object up is a point light, and this point light is located at the camera center. And if we just uh, imagine we have a cell phone, and let's just place the object in a dark room, uh, I can just ha capture a video with this uh, cell phone flash and camera, then we can just consider this as a co-located camera light setup. <coughs> and here are some uh, input image samples. So uh, intuitively, it just looks something like this. And also, what is a uh, output representation? It's a neural reflectance field. Basically, uh, it is an MLP to predict density and also normal direction and reflectance properties at every 3D location. And here, please note that uh, we don't really need to feed in the viewing angle because material is a property that do not, cons uh, do not condition on viewing direction. <coughs> and the goal of a neural reflection field is to do uh, novel view synthesis and relighting. <coughs> and here comes the, qu comes the question, so why do we want to use a co-located camera light setup? So basically, the problem of jointly capturing material and geometry is actually an ill pose inverse problem. Because appearance, as, a, this, ran, as this rendering equation shows, uh, the appearance is actually correlated to both material, lighting, and geometry. So the same appearance may lead to multiple solutions. And then why a co-located camera light set setup will help? So because in this case, it's known that there's only a single light source uh, to light this object up. So here we are removing this integral. So there's only one light source and we can just use a point light to approximate this cell phone flash. So this rendering equation can be basically simplified in this version. So the outgoing light is just the BRDF times the in incoming light. So here I'm just uh, omitting this irradiance factor. <coughs> okay, and here are the method of the neural reflection field. And the general idea is similar to NER, it's still uh, trying to jump jointly optimize for this scene representation with the photometric loss. So to get into it, we need to know three parts. So the first thing is the corresponding 3D scene representation. So in this paper it is a neural reflection field. And then we need to know how we can differentiably render this neural reflection field into an image. And the third part is how we can supervise this model so we can optimize for a neural reflection field and I will go into it step by step. 
So let's start with a new reflectance view. <coughs> so it is still a vo continuous volumetric function and it takes the location as input, so it's the x, y, z position in the world coordinate and every three location, this MLP is predicting a volume density. So this volume density is a one channel property and the surface normal is a three channel property and the material properties or reflectance is a four channel property. And the BRDF used in this paper is a simplified macrofossil model. Basically, the authors are using a diffuse albedo, which is a three channel property and a roughness one channel to describe the reflectance. <coughs> and the next thing is how we can differentiably render this new reflectance field into image. So the authors propose a reflectance aware ray marching. So there are basically two stages. The first stage is at any sample point on the ray, we can use material lighting to render the current location. And then we use an alpha compositing to composite the sample points along a ray. So let's consider the first part. Let's consider we want to render one sample location like at here, this red point, the red box. So <coughs> as we already know, the radiance of it should be the BRDF times the lighting intensity. But here, we need to be careful about one thing is we still need to know the availability of this lighting, this point light here. So to compute the visibility, we just compute the, we just shoot a ray to the point light and compute the transmittance along this ray. <coughs> and now we already have the radiance of one sample point. We want to composite along a ray. So this part is similar to NERV. We just times the density of the sample point at this uh, red here, the sample location, and we time the transmittance or visibility of this point. So it is basically after coming along all, all the previous points, how visible is this point here? And then we do this integral. So here, for now, we just have this, uh, the same uh, rendering formation here. <coughs> okay, and then the last thing is how we can supervise this method. So basically, uh, it's similar to NERV, it's still using a re-render L2 loss. And similar to NERV, there's a coarse network and a fine network, so there are two losses here. And also, the paper also used a regularization on transmittance to encourage the transmittance to be either zero or one, so it is shown here. So this is a supervision signal. Okay, but here comes a question. So. Uh, how many queries do we need to render an image? Is it efficient? For NERV, basically, we need to have uh, have a number of pixels times the number of sample points along the ray. So we need to do this number of queries. But is this the same for a neural reflectance field? Actually, it is not. So for because we also to compute the visibility of the light source, we also need to shoot a ray to the light. So basically, we also need to time the number of lights. Basically, here is one, one point light. And we also need to time the number of samples along this ray. <coughs> and this is just prohibitive, right? So uh, the authors propose some way, a way to speed up the inference. So basically, it is trying to pre-compute a light transmittance volume. So basically, here is the light, uh, point light position. I just shoot rays from this point light. And record all this, all the, record the transmittance of all these sample points. And during this process, I need to sh uh, like complete this number of queries. We need to have the number of light, so here it is one, the number of pixels here uh, of this image, and the number of samples along this ray. So we need to have this number of queries. And during inference, if we want to query for a light transmittance, we can just like we shoot another ray here, we can just directly interpolate, uh, maybe we can just use training interpolation from this pre-computation. And here the complexity is just reduced to this. So uh, it is just uh, still a little bit complex, but uh, it's already much better than the previous form. <coughs> okay, and then here are some results. So the efficiency is uh, so here are the computational efficiency. The first is the training time. It's around two days on four RTX GPUs. And the inference time is around 30 seconds for a 512 resolution image. And here are some uh, quality results. So here is the comparison with fireworks. So the NAM et al. is a match-based method and B et al. is the 
uh, voxel based method. So if you compare the details, so uh, this new neural functions field using implicit function, it can capture more high resolution details and can more faithfully reconstruct this specular highlight. So uh, indicating that it's capturing better material properties and finer details. And also here are some results. So on the left is a, a ground truth captured image and the second column is a render view and then the other columns are changing uh, viewing point and the lighting conditions. <coughs> and to show the generality, the authors also show some more results on human faces and some furry objects. So we can see that uh, uh, neural reflection field is getting pretty nice results here. And here is a demo uh, of object insertion. Basically, the author just voxelized the implicit function into a 512 cube, and can, we can render this in Blender in a synthetic environment. OK, so some conclusion from these results is that the neural reflection field can enable high color relighting and view synthesis. And this method can enable capturing finer details, so it also helps to improve the material capturing. Uh, maybe it's better to have some more realization of re-rendered normal and material properties so we can know whether this material is cleanly captured. Okay, and here's one question. So how can we handle more complex surfaces? So basically neural reflection field is using four channel properties to represent the uh, reflectance, but actually in real world, the, there are a lot of more complex effects that cannot be described by only four parameters. So can we directly use more complex uh, reflectance models with more parameters? So actually, in this, uh, in this work, we are solving a challenging ill post inverse problem. So uh, neural reflectance field is using a constrained lighting condition as the information to reduce the solution space to make this problem not that ill post. If we want to use a more complex re reflectance model, we also need to have the corresponding information so that we can constrain this ill postness and get the accurate or correct result to handle these more challenging complex effects. And also the limitation of neural reflectance field uh, is the first thing is the restricted lighting condition. So basically it is assuming that the cell phone flash is the only light source. So basically this is not convenient to satisfy in real world. And and also it is using a naive lighting model, it's basically a point light. Uh, and also another limitation is the rendering speed. So the runtime efficiency during inference is still not applicable in the real world. <coughs> and there's one uh, follow-up in this direction. It is a neural radiance decomposition paper. So it is recently put on archive. So this is a paper removing the lighting assumption during capturing. So the input is just multi view images and it removed the constraint of the co-located camera light setup. Uh, and the output is a volumetric MLP encoding material and volume density per location and it also estimate a per image environment illumination. And here we are introducing additional ambiguity, right? So basically uh, the author of NERD tried to introduce a bottleneck network structure for material so we can constrain the freedom to restrict the solution space. And they also have a nice video, so if you're interested in you can take a look at this paper. And thank you, that is all of my presentation.